Gran Turismo 3 A Spec is considered one of the greatest racing video games of all time. A racer that still holds up to this day graphically and gameplay wise, and it also became the second best selling game on the PlayStation 2, so a sequel was a guarantee in the near future. But wanting to keep the fans interested in the Gran Turismo series, Polyphony Digital also released a GT3 expansion featuring multiple concept cars from the 2001 Tokyo Motor Show. But it sold nearly half a million copies, a good number for a Japan exclusive, and they decided to make different versions every passing international motor show. Another version was released in South Korea on May 2002 with all the cars from Tokyo and a few more from the 2002 Seoul Motor Show. And finally, a PAL region version on July containing additional content from the Geneva Motor Show. As for North America, the closest thing they got was essentially a GT2000 demo featuring a Nissan 350Z concept car and a 150 second time limit around Circuit de Monaco. It surprises me that GT Concept wasn't released in North America given that half of the 14.8 million copies of GT3 were sold in that region. You think they would make a version with even more concept cars from the, I don't know, the New York Auto Show in 2002. Anyway, obviously being Australian, we're looking at the 2002 Tokyo Geneva version, the definitive edition. Everything from Gran Turismo Concept from the graphics to the driving mechanics is borderline identical to Gran Turismo 3. Even the soundtrack from the menus to being out on the track is also identical, at least in the power region. I mean, it works for me. Mind you, not hearing feeder just a day in the intro. Doesn't get me as excited as GT3. But there's no question you're gonna get the same well-made, no-nonsense racing game that for a lot of people watching this video shaped their childhoods. So instead this review is determining whether GT Concept was worth the extra content even if you already had GT3 in your collection. I'd be curious to know how much this game cost back in 2002. What you're looking at here is a full checklist with everything you can unlock in the whole game. Instead of a dedicated Gran Turismo mode, in fact before you can even select single race, there are course licenses you need to obtain to unlock the option to race on them. Fortunately there aren't too many, they're basically one lap time attacks where you can't fail even if you go off the track or hit a barrier, and I was able to place no worse than a silver on just the first attempt with a few gold ones too, even when it felt like I didn't have a perfect lap. An introduction to the series is the pace car to help you slipstream for a faster lap, and I consider it a hit and miss. It's very easy to accidentally overtake them on just the first corner, and whenever they try to get back in front, they almost always ruin your lap since they don't recognize you on the road. Almost similar to the opponent AI in Gran Turismo 4. It can work for others, but from my experience, the pace car didn't make any real difference in my lap times. So it could be because I played a lot of Gran Turismo 3 recently. Track memorization is still fresh in my mind. So once you unlock these circuits, there are no specific events to compete in. You unlock everything by simply winning on all the circuits and their reverse variations with any car you want. Similar to the way the arcade mode is structured in Gran Turismo 3, the game status screen here is just a fancier version of bonus items. However, the first couple of races, I was initially convinced the tyres put on these cars, even the racing ones, are just a standard road set, because it seemed like opponents overtook me every time I went around a corner. I thought maybe Maybe that's the price for selecting their professional difficulty. Tougher competition and there's no car tuning joint to upgrade anything. It turns out the driving assist anti-spin interferes more often compared to GT3. Like cars slow down on high speed corners by as much as 30 kilometers without touching the brake, practically waving at the opponents to let them by. So yeah, that's one thing I strongly advise against selecting. Besides, a car that oversteers a little more around the corners is a way better trade-off. It's the only thing about the driving mechanics that's noticeably different from Gran Turismo 3. But once you work it out, some races are still pretty challenging, particularly the faster courses Tokyo R246 and Swiss Alps, at least until the opponents get out of your slipstream. Or whenever you want a gold trophy on every course license. Sometimes it's about finding the car that's best in the class, since opponents are meant to be more balance based on the car you choose for a race. Because once you find the right one, you'll find yourself in the lead from the other side of the track in no time. 
and that's all there is to Gran Turismo Concepts. Because there are only 10 tracks, including reverse variations and 10 races to compete in, literally hours after I released the Gran Turismo 3 re-review, I managed to unlock everything there is to unlock in GT Concepts. You can win multiple prize cars in one race or license test, and it's almost always one that you'd actually like to drive. There was certainly a high dependence on concept and racing cars in Gran Turismo 3, and living up to the title of this one, it doubles down on it. And because each title was released in different regions based on the latest global car show at the time, we also see debuts and returns of multiple manufacturers. Not exactly hypercar branding, mind you there are a few hypercars available, but the total number of cars in Gran Turismo concept actually exceeds the main game it's based off. This must have been how Gran Turismo 4 was able to reach over 700 cars. 99% of everything from Gran Turismo 3 and Concept all appear in the sequel, which is why, having put potentially hundreds of hours into GT4 in my lifetime and only playing GT Concept for the first time, a lot of these cars don't feel new to me. I actually remember wondering even back then how many of these early 2000s concept cars were in this game while browsing these showrooms. The Mazda RX-8, Ford GT or Dodge Viper, and then next to them are the versions that went into production. Another bonus easter egg once you complete all the course licenses is a Toyota pod race set on a special circuit around the start and pit lanes of Special Stage Route 5, including a spot that requires you to use the handbrake to let the car adjust itself for the steep ramp. The car in question is a silver toaster with a big power sign on the front, a dog's tail at the back, and makes the sort of lights and sound effects that fit more appropriately in a Mario Kart game or a coffee break in the Great Turismo 4 license test. It's funny, but only for one race. I can't see myself entering this event ever again after that. However, the most valuable unlockable if you have a Gran Turismo mode profile in GT3, a gift card for 10 million credits and all the licenses unlocked from the start. Basically, another potential get rich quick scheme and definitely the most enjoyable way to get yourself started because in comparison, the prize money that's worth the equivalent of 20 Monaco 78 lap endurance events, you can earn the same amount by essentially playing through the arcade mode with cars that didn't exist in Gran Turismo 3. I'll take that over competing in the Sunday Cup or any other beginner event a dozen times too many. I would have brought this up in the GT3 re-review if I knew this earlier, but that's the thing. Gran Turismo Concept was released a year later, so you didn't have this option back then. And did I mention this didn't come out in North America? If there's one thing I really wish GT Concept had was more than 5 circuits to drive on. It should have had at least 10. Like Special Stage Route 5, if that's where the pod race is set, why not just add the whole track as well? Maybe Polyphony used up all the DVD space to fit the extra cars. It didn't use the dual A format like Gran Turismo 4. And again, because we have GT4 that has all these cars available anyway, you're only really getting this game more so to drive these cars with Gran Turismo 3 mechanics. Actually, putting it like that, that's enough to make it worth playing. Polyphony Digital making demo versions of their main titles would become common throughout the 2000s, including Gran Turismo 4 Prologue, HD Concept, and Gran Turismo 5 Prologue. In addition to Tourist Trophy, it's easy to forget how productive Polyphony were despite only releasing two Gran Turismo games in that decade. For what is basically a demo, Gran Turismo Concept is a respectable epilogue with plenty of content available to nearly classify it as a full sequel if it had more circuits. But with that said, it's only worth picking up if you want to complete your Gran Turismo collection or drive the non-prototype versions of the Subaru and Mitsubishi rally cars. Thank you guys on Patreon for your support, and a special thanks to Alex Vidal, Bibbs, Riddleback, Darcy McIntosh, David Myers, Eric Barboza, Ian Walker, Jerry Thomas, Keza BFC, Maxims, Mike Camille, Nando Boy, Ruffian Shark, and VXL. 
And of course, thank you all for watching. Yeah, I'm not fully done talking about Gran Turismo 3. I'm planning on making a plus 30 minute review in the future and I'm making a couple of small ones to allow myself to capture footage for the big one. So I hope you all enjoyed this one, another Gran Turismo video. Don't forget to support on Patreon, follow on Twitter, Facebook and subscribe for future game reviews. Speak to you soon.